What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, I'm going to show you what several different brush piles look like on 2D sonar, down imaging, side imaging, as well as live scope, and on an underwater camera. So you can compare all of these different images of a brush pile to know exactly what you're looking at when you go to the lake. Let's get into it. Here's the first brush pile I graphed on side imaging. It's in about 13 feet of water, and right now it's directly below the boat on my side imaging image. There's also a little piece of brush on the left side of the boat as well, and you can see a few fish that are sitting in front of the brush pile in the black space on the side imaging image. Here's a look at the same brush pile on 2D sonar and down imaging. You can see several fish that are setting up in front of this brush pile, just to the left of it in these two images. There aren't that many fish actually set up around the brush pile itself. Maybe a few small dots that you can see on down imaging that may be bluegill or smaller bait fish. However, there aren't that many fish actually set up in the brush pile itself. If we switch to the live scope view, you can see the fish that we saw on down imaging and 2D sonar closer to the bottom and out in front of the brush pile. I tried fishing for these fish with a variety of baits but couldn't get them to bite. I then moved closer to the brush pile, and again, I didn't see very many fish, if any, in the actual brush pile itself on live scope. Finally, I dropped the new AquaView camera I got down in this brush pile to see what it looks like on video. When I dropped it in the brush pile itself, I really didn't see any fish activity except for one small bass. The water visibility on this lake isn't great, maybe two and a half to four feet of visibility, depending on where you are. So we're not going to get these crystal clear images as if we were on a northern lake with 10 foot of visibility, but we can still see the limbs of the trees very easily, and we can tell that there aren't that many fish around this brush pile. I did try to video out in front of the brush pile as well, and I did see one pretty good quality bass out in front of that brush. That was the only fish I was able to see because they seem to be roaming around quite a bit out in front of that brush. But it is interesting to note that those were bass, or at least a few of them were bass, and I couldn't get them to bite. Next, I wanted to find a brush pile with a few more fish actually related to the brush itself. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes to find another brush pile that had fish in it, and when I graphed this one with my side imaging, you can actually see a few fish in the black space right next to that brush. I switched the screen a little bit too quickly so you don't get the perfect image of this brush pile, but you can at least see what it looks like from this angle on side imaging. If we switch to the down imaging in 2D sonar view, you can see that there are quite a few dots visible on the down imaging side, but not very many arches visible on the 2D sonar side. I've made a video explaining my 2D sonar settings where I basically take the sensitivity down to a point where I filter out a lot of the smaller fish and smaller bait fish. So you're not going to see as many arches on my 2D side as you will on the down imaging side. This is on purpose. If you want more information about this, you can check out the video I've linked down in the description. Looking at the down imaging image in particular though, you can see that there are several fish suspended above the brush and a few fish are actually setting up in the brush pile itself down there in 20 to 25 feet of water. After graphing this brush pile with traditional sonar, I dropped the live scope and you can clearly see some fish suspended around the brush itself. I actually threw several baits at these fish and at one point got them to follow my hover rig all the way back to the boat, but they wouldn't bite. Initially, I thought they might be crappie or some other species other than bass, just because there were so many fish there, and for whatever reason, I couldn't get them to bite even the smallest baits I threw at them. However, after dropping the AquaView camera on this brush pile, I was quickly proven wrong because you can see bass all over the video here. The bass were suspended near the top of the brush, and even though the water visibility wasn't that great, you could still see 7 to 8 bass at times on the camera. You can also see that there are some panfish, bluegill, brim, whatever you like to call them, in the brush pile itself, while the bass were setting up around the edges of the brush pile. I found this interesting, and I was also a little bit curious as to why I couldn't get these bass to bite, especially because they were schooled up and so tightly packed together. One thing I did notice is that the bass around this brush pile were pretty small and I wanted to find a brush pile with some bigger fish in it. So I graphed for another 30 to 45 minutes to try to find a brush pile with some bigger bass. I finally did manage to find one. You can see what it looks like here on the side imaging. 
Again, I graphed directly over the top of the brush pile here, so you're not going to see that much of the brush on the right and the left side of the boat. A lot of it is directly below the boat, but I will point out what it looks like here. After switching over to the 2D sonar and down imaging comparison view, you can see we graphed over two different brush piles. The brush pile that's on the left stands out a little bit more, but it's hard to tell if they're actually fishing that brush pile or not. However, the brush pile on the right is definitely what I'm looking for when I'm trying to find better quality fish around a brush pile. You'll notice that you can actually barely see that brush pile on the 2D sonar view, but you can see it relatively well on the down imaging view. The few lines or arches you see on the 2D sonar view are actually fish. And again, the way I set up my 2D sonar settings will filter out all the smaller fish and sometimes the less dense brush leaving only the fish showing up. These arches don't look that impressive or that bold, but this is actually a lot of times what I see on my graph when I graph over a brush pile that's holding three to five pound bass. I then switched to the live scope view and made a few casts in this brush pile. After throwing the big worm in there, I actually did get a bite and for whatever reason, the fish let go and when I set the hook, I snagged the brush pile. However, you can see that there are a few brighter dots around this brush pile. It's pretty hard to differentiate fish from brush when they're actually inside of a brush pile, but I'll try my best to point them out in this image. Basically, you're going to see those dots moving a little bit more than the actual limbs of the tree, and they should stand out brighter on the screen if you have your live scope settings set properly. These are definitely better quality fish, and I was excited to drop the AquaView down there to see if we can see one. After dropping the AquaView camera down, I immediately saw a better than average quality bass on the camera, and it was definitely the biggest fish I saw on camera all day. I'm not sure how big it is, I just got this camera so it's hard to tell the scale of the fish, whether it's a 2 pounder or a 5 pounder, but it was definitely a little bit bigger than the fish I had been seeing in the other areas. I wasn't able to see that many fish around this brush pile just because the visibility was a little bit worse in this part of the lake, but it was definitely cool to see those fish on all different types of sonar, identify them as better quality fish, and then drop the camera and get some validation that what I'm doing is actually working. As a little bonus, I want to show you the school of fish I graphed over on my 2D sonar and down imaging view. These fish were set up right next to a steep channel swing bank, and there were a pile of them stacked up here. These fish were grouped tightly together but spread out across the bottom, and based on my experience, I expected these to be either catfish, maybe white bass, or just a big group of crappie. Therefore, I dropped the camera down just to see what they were, and well, I was honestly shocked to find out that these were all bass. These fish were set up in a very weird location considering the season I was in. Basically, it is the middle of August, and I just wouldn't have expected a school of, let's say, 100 bass to be set up right next to this channel swing bank. As I kept moving down this channel swing bank, I kept seeing more and more bass on the AquaView camera, even though the water visibility wasn't great. I can only imagine how many I could have seen if the water had 5 to 10 feet of visibility. This just goes to show that we don't know everything about fishing and a lot of our preconceived notions about what fish look like on a fish finder or where they position can be completely wrong. And that's why I want to start using this AquaView camera more often and making comparisons to my different types of sonar to make sure that I'm not overlooking big opportunities like the school of fish here. Now, interestingly enough, I did try to fish for these fish for about 30 minutes. I did let them rest after dropping the camera down there. But after coming back, I threw basically every bait in my tackle box at them, and I could not get them to bite. And I actually never caught a single fish that I saw on any of the areas that I've shown in this video. So if you go out to your lake and you see fish all over your fish finder, but you can't get them to bite, that doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't bass or they aren't the species of fish you're trying to target. Instead, they may just be in a bad mood, you might not have the timing right, or you may need to come back on a day with better conditions to get those fish to actually eat. So don't get too discouraged, keep graphing, and also, if you want to check out one of these AquaView cameras to help you validate what you're seeing on your fish finder screen, I'll leave a link to a couple down in the description below. They're not that expensive, and they actually can hook into a lot of different fish finders on the market, so you can view the video directly on your fish finder. It's a pretty cool tool, definitely check it out using the link in the description. Thanks for checking out this video guys, we'll see y'all next one.